Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And good morning. This is the first Sunday of May, and we are gathered again to worship God. It is good to be able to be with you in this way on this morning while we give glory to God. On this Today is a beautiful sunny morning. I hope it is on Sunday, too. For worship today, because it is the first Sunday of the month, we will celebrate communion together. So I encourage you, if you haven't already, to find a grain uh, somewhere in your house, whether that's a cracker or a piece of bread, uh, and to find some fruit of the vine, a juice, uh, or something that you might be able to drink so that when we get to the part of the service where we celebrate communion together, you will be able to participate with us. In the coming week, we will have uh, several Zoom calls. You are welcome to join us for fellowship Monday mornings at 10 a.m., Wednesdays at 6 p.m. for a time of prayer, and Friday nights at 8 p.m. at the end of the week for another Zoom fellowship. I hope you can join us so that we can see your faces and share with one another. If you would like to share a prayer request, uh, we would love to be in prayer with you. Uh, you can share those uh, via text at 651-327-0779, or you can share them in comments on Facebook if you are watching this as a Facebook Live video. Uh, there are ways that we want to be together in prayer, even if we can't have our regular prayer times uh, in real time as we have in the past. So please share with us what you would like us to be praying with you about. I believe that is all of our announcements this morning, and so let us prepare our hearts and minds. Let us worship God. Please join us now as we begin our worship together with the call to worship led by our confirmation students and mentors. God, you are a God of invitation. You invited, you invited Abraham, Abraham to, to follow, follow you. you. You invited the disciples to drop their nets. You, you invited, invited the children, children, children to draw near. Draw near. You invited Peter to walk on water. You invited I to collect to dinner. To dinner. To dinner. You invited the Samaritan woman into an eternal life. Just, Just the same. same. You invite us, us to live, live lives, lives of faith. Of faith. Invite us to live lives of faith. Give us the strength to say yes. Let, Let us worship, worship good, good and holy, and holy God. God. Worship God. Holy God.
It is important in our life together that we tell the truth about ourselves, that we are honest with God about all of who we are. So we join now in our prayer of confession, knowing that whatever we share with God, we will be met with forgiveness and with grace. Let us pray. God, God we confess, confess we are we are loose, loose, loose and, and you give us a gift, a gift, a gift of community, community. And, and we, we all have exclusion, exclusion and isolation. And isolation. You, you give us the gift, a gift of, of a new day, day. and we and spend more time unraveling just unraveling justice, and justice and and seeds of and peace and, and unity. Of peace and unity. You give us the gift, gift of holy, holy surprise and unimaginable beauty, and, and we shut off our hearts, our hearts, our blindfolded eyes. eyes. Forgive, Forgive us, us for our, our afraid, afraid and, and, and self-centered self hearts. Unravel the sin in us. Unravel and the replace sin it in us. With love. Replace it with love. Gratefully, Gratefully, Gratefully we, pray. we pray. Amen. 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 Listen, for the God who created us says, Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. You are precious to me. I love you. I honor you. I am with you. to talk with the youngest disciples among us and ask you a question. Have you ever been on a boat ride? Have you ever gotten to be on a boat when it was out on a lake or maybe even on the ocean? I've gotten to take a few boat rides in my life and I've always thought it to be a really fun experience. I love I've been on the ocean and been able to see whales. I've been on lakes and been able to canoe or kayak or be on a boat and see the beauty of a lake. I wonder what your stories about being on a boat are. I would love to hear them. Our story from the Bible today uh, is about the disciples on a boat. And the weather is not good, and this boat ride is a little bit scary. And then, amazingly, they see, see Jesus coming to them. So even in their scariest moment, even when they do not know what's going on, Jesus comes to them and tells them not to be afraid. I hope that whenever our lives can be a bit scary, when we don't know what's going on, we can remember that God is with us in the midst of that. Did you get my letter this week in the mail? If you didn't, let me know. I'm happy to send one to you if you didn't get one. 
I sent our youngest disciples some coloring pages that when everyone colors and we're able to be back together, we'll create one big poster. And I sent you some pieces of unraveling fabric where you can write your prayers of unraveling on them and we will put them all together. We are working for the whole congregation to get some unraveling pieces of fabric together and uh, make sure there's a way that we can all offer our prayers as part of that. Stay tuned in the next week or two as we work on that art installation together. But I hope you youngest among us know that we want to be a representation for you of God with you that we want you to know that we are thinking about you and praying for you and want to hear from you, want to see your coloring pages, want to hear your prayers. Uh, just as we want you to know that God is with you, we want you to know that God's church is with you too. And we want to be here together with you. So I can't wait to see what you create. I can't wait to hear your stories. I can't wait to uh, be back together again. But until then, know that God comes and meets you wherever you are. And God loves you just the way you are. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and good morning. My name is Pastor Greg and I'm one of the pastors here at First Presbyterian Church. And it is uh, my joy to be with you um, online as we share in le learning about the gospel of Jesus Christ, learning through this season of unraveled, uh, seeking God when our plans fall apart. This morning's lesson comes from the gospel according to Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Listen now for what the gospel has for you this morning. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land. And for the wind was against him. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear, but immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. Beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why do you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This week, I opened up my Facebook, and I saw a post from one of my professors from McCormick Theological Seminary. Dr. Reggie Williams said, I don't recall another moment in my lifetime filled with so much uncertainty. The thing is, I don't think he's alone. It seems like every day is beset by some kind of uncertainty. We are in the midst of a flood of information that comes from all sides and from every angle, telling us to be terrified, telling us to be brave. Telling us there's nothing to worry about. Telling us that it will never be the same. Telling us to wear masks. Telling us to scoff at those wearing masks.
telling us to listen to the CDC, telling us, don't worry about them, they don't know what they're talking about. And all of that is just on our news, in our media, and on our social feeds. Whether those be over the internet or over a fence. Then there's this uncertainty of when it will be safe to go out. Will I still have a vacation? Will my kids get to go to summer camp? Will, will I be able to hold on financially? Will my business close? Will my school continue? Will the church still be open? Will I be able to see my friends? Will I have a job? Will anyone, will I or anyone I know get sick? Will anyone I know die? These questions and others like it run through my mind and through the minds of many that I talk to. In this morning's scripture, we find ourselves in the middle of a story. Jesus has gone off to pray after feeding the 5,000, after learning about his cousin John the Baptist being beheaded. Jesus goes by himself to pray and sends his disciples off on a boat in the Sea of Galilee. The wind and waves have been battering them, and they don't get very far except from the land. And Jesus begins to walk across the Sea of Galilee. He walks towards them and thinks, Oh my God, that's a ghost! Because what else would you think? You're on a boat that's being ravaged by wind and waves. And you see someone or, or something walking across the water? Your first thought is probably not, oh, that's my friend Jesus. Hey, oh, well, at, least it, uh, at least it wouldn't be my first thought. Jesus says, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter reacts, Lord, if it is you, command me to come out to you on the water. Peter, see, is a reactor. And he is often reckless in his response. Throughout his ministry, Jesus had to pull Peter back to change his course, to, to temper his reaction. Jesus responds to Peter, come. Peter, being Peter, steps out and walks on water, which frankly is pretty cool, and then he realizes what is happening. He is walking on water. He falls. Jesus comes to him. Jesus moves toward him. Jesus reaches for him. Jesus lifts him up and brings him back to the boat to the amazement of the, and awe of the other disciples. The thing that I want you to think about the thing that I've been thinking about is who am I in this story today? There are times when I have embodied, have identified with every character in this story. I've been willing to go first. I've been frozen with fear. I've been in awe. I've even, on rare occasions, been the one moving towards others to help but most of all, I feel like I'm the one saying, Lord, save me. Now, I'm willing to bet that at some point in your life, most, if not all of you, could identify with different characters in this story. I always love the stories that give me a glimpse of who I am. John Calvin begins the Institutes of the Christian Religion with the idea that the more that I know about God, the more I know myself. The more I know God, the more I know myself. And the more I know myself, the more I know God. So in these stories about God, the God we know through the person of Jesus, when they tell us about ourselves and we can see ourselves in the stories, those are the stories that help us remember who we are and whose we are. Now, I will admit that oftentimes I feel like I and other preachers read the Bible and tell the story of who you should be rather than who you are. 
Lutheran pastor and author, Nadia, Reverend Nadia Bowles Weber, says it like this. Yet a lot of what I've heard the church both with this story and with so many others is not who I am, but who I should be. I should be the one with enough faith to walk on water. I should be the one whose eyes are always on Jesus. Always on Jesus. I, I should be the one who makes my way to Jesus. My mother-in-law has a phrase that she often says, Do not should on me. See, all of these characters in the walking on water story, the cautious ones in the boat, the, the brave one who walked for a time on the water, the same one who is afraid and sinks and calls for help, and the ones who saw it and all confessed that Jesus is the Son of God, they are actually equal in their relationship to God because all of these and you have one thing in common. They are those whom Jesus draws near, saying, It is I. Do not be afraid. The glamorous part of this story is that Peter walked on water, which is pretty cool. And maybe he, most, he almost had enough faith to make his way to Jesus, but what happens on either side of this short little walk Jesus comes toward him. In the storm, Jesus is walking towards the boat. When Peter sinks, Jesus is reaching toward Peter. Then he comes so much toward them all that he finally gets in the boat. That's about as with them as he can be. Yet we seem to always focus on Peter walking toward Jesus. When the whole story is about how much Jesus walks towards them reaches towards them and even gets in the boat with them. I see and hear fear gripping us in this time of uncertainty, this unraveling. Fear of the unknown, fear of the breakdown of the economy, fear of the breakdown of our civilization, fear of the breakdown of relationships, fear of death of over 60,000 people in the last six weeks from COVID-19. All of this fear, all of this nervousness and trepidation, in all of it, Jesus is moving toward us. Jesus is in the boat with us. For the next few weeks, our worship services are focused on the theme called Unraveled, seeking God when our plans fall apart. And it is easy to see that the plans of the disciples in this story continued to fall apart. They planned to be with Jesus, and Jesus sent them away. They planned on crossing the Sea of Galilee, but they were battered by wind and waves. Peter planned to walk on water. They were uncertain of their future. They were uncertain of the next steps. And yet, Jesus continued to move towards them. As our plans unravel, as our expectations are changed, as our hope is lifted and dashed, as we seek to reform ourselves into a post-pandemic society, it feels like it's up in the air sometimes. It feels as if we were sinking under the water sometimes. It feels as if we are frozen in fear sometimes feels like we just need to tell the story. But in all of it, in all the uncertainty, in all of the confusion, Jesus draws near to us. Jesus who loves us. Jesus who calls us beloved. Jesus who is in the boat with us, helping us to put back, to reframe, to reset our expectations. Knowing that no matter what we do, no matter where we go, no matter how faithful we are or not, Jesus, Emmanuel, is God with us. May it be so, and amen.
two, three. Let us affirm the faith that we share by saying the affirmation of faith together. I believe in God, the great sower, who weaves us together in community, collecting our loose ends and turning them into belonging. I believe in the Holy Spirit, who hems us in before and behind, catching us when we fall and writing us into God's holy narrative. And I believe in Jesus Christ, who loved and claimed the people society had thrown out, refusing to disregard anyone as scrap. I believe God has woven part of God's self into the fiber of our being, making us inherently worthy of love and belonging. I believe the fabric of my life is weak, that I am prone to error and need God's handiwork to remind me of love. I believe in the church and that like a quilt of different fabrics, she is designed to be as diverse and beautiful as God's creation. And I believe that when life unravels, God is there to stitch my wounds together, to hold me in the palm of God's hand, to tell me of love, and to invite me into a new journey. Amen. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. O holy God, we pray for the church, for the church around the world that is having to make difficult choices about how best to help without harming, how we can be the body of Christ when the body is sick or in danger of becoming sick. Give us wisdom. 
Give us the short-term and long-term vision of your will here on earth. Give us the eyes we need to see. God, we pray for those who govern and those in authority. For city council members and county commissioners and state representatives and governors and federal legislators and the president, all of whom are making decisions that affect us all and without all of the data we wish we had. So we pray that they will make decisions in the best interest of all of our citizens, the healthy and the weak, the rich and the poor, the employed and the unemployed, the young and the retired. Give them all courage to make hard decisions. Give them good counsel. Give them peace of mind, knowing that they have done their best. God, we pray for the earth. We join in praise for all of the healing that the planet has experienced in the past weeks. We are thankful that we can witness what different choices can do for our environment. Help us to think of creative ways to keep in right relationship with the rest of creation. Help us to make new and different choices so that these gains will not be lost. Help us use the good gifts of the earth for the benefit of all. God, we pray for the poor and the oppressed, the sick, the bereaved, the lonely, all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. There are so many who are hurting, God. Many who are experiencing profound loneliness many who are mentally suffering, many who are trapped in homes with abusers. Give us the eyes to see those to whom we can reach out with a kind word. Give us ears to hear the cries of the lonely and the hurting. We pray for the healing that is needed and for the ways that we can be instruments of that healing. God, we pray for those who have died. In this time when visits to the dying are limited and funerals can often not be held, we pray for those who are dying and those who are grieving a loss. May you hold them up. May they know love, even if physically distant. And may we find ways to support one another even while apart. And for all of those prayers too deep or too real or true or raw or scary that we can't name them aloud, we pray now in the silence of our hearts. You hear our prayers, O oh God, and we are thankful. We pray in the name of the one who came to save us, Jesus. And we end our prayers by saying together while apart the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us spend this time thinking about how we can rededicate our whole lives as an offering to God. If you'd like to support the church financially, you can do that using our online giving the Give Now button on our website. You can also leave a check in the box in front of the church. Let us take this time 
to rededicate ourselves to the work of God. Gracious God, we thank you for showering your love upon us. Bless us that these gifts given in love may be used to reflect your love in a world so desperate for it. Amen. Good morning. Uh, we wanted to share with you communion uh, together. Uh, the Lord's Supper as we gather in groups, in families, uh, alone as we gather in our homes we wanted to gather with you in our home to break this bread and drink this cup. This morning, uh, the Bolt family, Heidi and I, will be partaking of an English muffin, our common grain, and our fruit of the vine is a grape juice, both of which were provided by the school district's food program. Thank you to Brent Lexfold and um, the paras and the women and the folks in the kitchen who are making sure that our children are fed. Uh, we are blessed to be able to break bread with you and, uh, and to honor you today. John Calvin says, when we break this bread and drink this cup, we are raised into the presence of God. Whether that's in person or online, whether that's in our houses or in our outside enjoying the great, uh, the wonderful weather, we are raised to the presence of God when we gather together to eat this bread and drink this cup. So friends, we are in the presence of God. God comes near and we receive and feel God's presence. May you feel this God's presence in this meal, knowing that Jesus invites all to this meal. To partake, all are welcome, all are fed, all are nourished, 
Let us come together and celebrate the Lord's Supper. All is ready. Come, taste, and see the Lord is good. And so we pray, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God our thanks and praise. Holy God, we praise you. Let the heavens be joyful and the earth be glad. We bless you for creating the whole world, for your promises to your people Israel and for Jesus Christ, in whom your fullness dwells. Born of Mary, he shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Guiding his children, he leads us. Visiting the sick, he heals us. Dying on the cross, he saves us. Risen from the dead, he gives new life. Living with you, he prays for us. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels and with all the faithful all around Red Wing and the surrounding areas, all the faithful of every time and every place, who forever sing to the glory of your name, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. With thanksgiving we take this bread and this cup and proclaim the death and resurrection of our Lord. Receive our sacrifice of praise. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that this meal may be a communion in the body and blood of our Lord. Make us one with Christ and with all who share this feast, wherever they may be. Unite us in faith. Encourage us with hope. Inspire us to love that we may serve as your faithful disciples until we feast at your table in glory. We praise you, eternal God, through Christ, your word made flesh in the holy and life-giving spirit now and forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus gathered with his friends and uh, he said, take, after giving thanks, he said, take, he broke the bread. He said, take and eat, do so remembering me. And in the same way, after dinner, he took the cup and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, do so remembering me. So friends, when we gather in our homes, are in our worship space, and we eat this bread, this common grain, and we drink this cup, this fruit of the vine, we proclaim the risen Christ already and not yet. Friends, now is the time. Come, taste, see, again, the Lord is good. As you partake, I want you to think, or uh, if you are by yourself, or to say to those around you, as you give the bread, the bread of heaven. The bread of heaven. Amen. And take the cup, and you can dip or drink. It's up to you. It's your house. Say, the cup of salvation. Amen. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is the bread of heaven. Amen. And this is the cup of salvation. Amen. Let us pray together. Holy, Holy God. God. We, we thank, thank you for, for this feast of grace and life. As, as we have been served, help us to serve our neighbors. As we have been fed, help us to feed all who are hungry. We have been loved, help us to love the world. Because in Christ Jesus, you have loved us. Amen. And you love our pets. Amen.
Folks, as we continue to gather online, know that Christ is moving towards you. Christ is with you in the midst of all of this, in the midst of your fear and of your trepidation, in the midst of your hope and your anguish. Jesus is there with you. Jesus is in the boat with us. Remembering that every single day, God looks down upon you and says, Beloved, with you I am well pleased. Do your best to know that in here, to feel that in here, and to live that where you are. Because we are in the boat together. We are in this together with God and with one another. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.